Pompeii was an ancient Roman city near modern Naples in the Campania region of Italy, in the territory of the commune of Pompeii. Pompeii, along with Herculaneum and many villas in the surrounding area e.g. at Boscariel, Stabiae, was buried under 4 to 6 metres 13 to 20 feet of volcanic ash and pumice in the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. Many of the inhabitants were also buried before they could escape. The catastrophe was described in a surviving letter by Pliny the Younger who saw the eruption from a distance and described the death of his uncle Pliny the Elder, an admiral of the Roman fleet, who tried to rescue citizens. The site was eventually lost until its initial rediscovery in 1599 and broader rediscovery almost 150 years later by Spanish engineer Roque Joaquin de Alcubierre in 1748. The city has been largely preserved because of lack of air and moisture. The artifacts preserved provide an extraordinarily detailed insight into the life of the city. During excavations liquid plaster was used to fill the voids in the ash that once held human and animal bodies, giving often gruesome images of their last moments. Pompeii has been a tourist destination for over 250 years. Today it has UNESCO World Heritage Site status and is one of the most popular tourist attractions in Italy, with approximately 2.5 million visitors every year. Excavations recommenced in 2018 in the unexplored Reggio V area of the city and new discoveries are being reported. Topic Name Pompeii pronounced PMPG in Latin as a second declension plural Pompeii orum. According to Theodor Krauss, the root of the word Pompeii would appear to be the Oscan word for the number five, Pompa, which suggests that either the community consisted of five hamlets or, perhaps, it was settled by a family group Gens Pompeia. <laughs> Geography The ruins of Pompeii are located near the modern suburban town of Pompeii nowadays written with one I. It stands on a spur formed by a lava flow to the north of the mouth of the Sarno River known in ancient times as the Sarnus. The city had suffered from other seismic events before the eruption. Three sheets of sediment have also been found on top of the lava that lies below the city which were created by large landslides, perhaps triggered by extended rainfall. Today it is some distance inland, but in ancient times was nearer to the coast. Pompeii is about 8 kilometers miles away from Mount Vesuvius. It covered a total of 64 to 67 hectares 170 acres and was home to approximately 11,000 to 11,500 people on the basis of household counts. It was a major city in the region of Campania. History Early history Archaeology has shown that the town was founded in the 7th or 6th century BC by the OSCI or Oscans, a people of central Italy, on what was an important crossroad between Cumi, Nola and Stabiae. It had already been used as a safe port by Greek and Phoenician sailors. According to Strabo, Pompeii was also captured by the Etruscans, and recent excavations have shown the presence of Etruscan inscriptions and a 6th century BC necropolis. Pompeii was captured for the first time by the Greek colony of Cumae, allied with Syracuse, between 525 and 474 BC. In the 5th century BC, the Samnites conquered it and all the other towns of Campania, the new rulers imposed their architecture and enlarged the town. After the Samnite Wars 4th century BC, Pompeii was forced to accept the status of Socium of Rome, maintaining, however, linguistic and administrative autonomy. In the 4th century BC it was fortified with walls. Pompeii remained faithful to Rome during the Second Punic War. The Temple of Apollo was built in the 2nd century BC as the city's most important religious structure. Pompeii took part in the war that the towns of Campania initiated against Rome, but in 89 BC it was besieged by Sulla. Although the battle-hardened troops of the Social League, headed by Lucius Cluentius, helped in resisting the Romans, in 89 BC Pompeii was forced to surrender after the conquest of Nola, culminating in many of Sulla's veterans being given land and property, while many of those who went against Rome were ousted from their homes. It became a Roman colony with the name of Colonia Cornelia Venaria Pompeianorum. 
The town became an important passage for goods that arrived by sea and had to be sent toward Rome or southern Italy along the nearby Appian Way. It was fed with water by a spur from Aqua Augusta Naples built c. 20 BC by Agrippa, the main line supplied several other large towns, and finally the naval base at Misenum. The Castellum in Pompeii is well preserved, and includes many details of the distribution network and its controls. First century AD The excavated city offers a snapshot of Roman life in the first century, frozen at the moment it was buried in autumn AD 79. The Forum, the Baths, many houses, and some out-of-town villas like the Villa of the Mysteries remain well preserved. Details of everyday life are preserved. For example, on the floor of one of the houses Syracos, a famous inscription Sav, Lucru, Welcome, Prophet, indicates a trading company owned by two partners, Syrico and Numianus, but this could be a nickname, since Numus means coin, money. Other houses provide details concerning professions and categories, such as for the laundry workers, Falones. Wine jars have been found bearing what is apparently the world's earliest known marketing pun, technically a blend, Vesuvinum, combining Vesuvius and the Latin for wine, Venum. The numerous graffiti carved on the walls and inside rooms provides a wealth of information regarding vulgar Latin, the form of Latin spoken colloquially rather than the literary language of the classical writers. In 89 BC, after the final occupation of the city by Roman general Lucius Cornelius Sulla, Pompeii was finally annexed by the Roman Republic. During this period, Pompeii underwent a vast process of infrastructural development, most of which was built during the Augustan period. These include an amphitheater, a palaestra with a central natatorium or swimming pool and an aqueduct that provided water for more than 25 street fountains, at least four public baths, and a large number of private houses and businesses. The amphitheater has been cited by modern scholars as a model of sophisticated design, particularly in the area of crowd control. The aqueduct branched through three main pipes from the Castellum Aquae, where the waters were collected before being distributed to the city. In extreme drought, the water supply would first fail to reach the public baths, the least vital service, then private houses and businesses, and if there were no water flow at all, the system would fail to supply the public fountains, the most vital service in the streets of Pompeii. The pools in Pompeii were mostly for decoration. The large number of well-preserved frescoes provide information on everyday life and have been a major advance in art history of the ancient world, with the innovation of the Pompeian styles first, second, third style. Some aspects of the culture were distinctly erotic, including frequent use of the phallus as apotropaeon or good luck charm in various types of decoration. A large collection of erotic votive objects and frescoes were found at Pompeii. Many were removed and kept until recently in a secret collection at the University of Naples. At the time of the eruption, the town may have had some 11,000 inhabitants, and was located in an area where Romans had holiday villas. William Abbott explains, At the time of the eruption, Pompeii had reached its high point in society as many Romans frequently visited Pompeii on vacations. It is the only ancient town of which the whole topographic structure is known precisely as it was, with no later modifications or additions. Due to the difficult terrain, it was not distributed on a regular plan as most Roman towns were, but its streets are straight and laid out in a grid in the Roman tradition. They are laid with polygonal stones, and have houses and shops on both sides of the street. It followed its Decamanus main east, west road, and its Cardo main north, south road, centered on the Forum. Modern archaeologists have excavated garden sites and urban domains to reveal the agricultural staples in Pompeii's economy prior to AD 79. Pompeii was fortunate to have a fruitful, fertile region of soil for harvesting a variety of crops. The soils surrounding Mount Vesuvius even preceding its eruption have been revealed to have good water holding capabilities, implying access to productive agriculture. The Tyrrhenian Sea's airflow provided hydration to the soil despite the hot, dry climate. The rural areas surrounding Pompeii had abundant agricultural land that was very fertile and could produce much larger quantities of goods than the city needed. Some speculate that much of the flat land in Campania, surrounding the areas of Pompeii, was dedicated to grain and wheat production. Cereal, barley, wheat, and millet were all produced by the locals in Pompeii. 
These grains, along with wine and olive oil, were produced in abundance for export to other regions. Evidence of wine imported nationally from Pompeii in its most prosperous years can be found from recovered artifacts such as wine bottles in Rome. For this reason, vineyards were of utmost importance to Pompeii's economy. Agricultural policymaker Columella suggested that each vineyard in Rome produced a quota of three cullae of wine per jugurum, otherwise the vineyard would be uprooted. The nutrient-rich lands near Pompeii were extremely efficient at this and were often able to exceed these requirements by a steep margin, therefore providing the incentive for local wineries to establish themselves. While wine was exported for Pompeii's economy, the majority of the other agricultural goods were likely produced in quantities relevant to the city's consumption. Remains of large formations of constructed wineries were found in Forum Borium, covered by cemented casts from the eruption of Vesuvius. It is speculated that these historical vineyards are strikingly similar in structure to the modern-day vineyards across Italy. Water depressions have also been found in close proximity to the wineries and served as water wells for the produce and livestock. Carbonized food plant remains, roots, seeds and pollens, have been found from gardens in Pompeii, Herculaneum and from the Roman villa at Torre Annunziata. They revealed that emmer wheat, Italian millet, common millet, walnuts, pine nuts, chestnuts, hazelnuts, chickpeas, bitter vetch, broad beans, olives, figs, pears, onions, garlic, peaches, carob, grapes, and dates were consumed. All except the dates could have been produced locally. Besides the Forum, many other services were found: the Macellum (great food market), the Pistrinum (mill), the Thermopolium (sort of bar that served cold and hot beverages), and Coppenae (small restaurants). An amphitheater and two theaters have been found, along with a palestra or gymnasium. A hotel of 1,000 square meters was found a short distance from the town. It is now nicknamed the Grand Hotel Maracine. Geothermal energy supplied channeled district heating for baths and houses. At least one building, the Lupaner, was dedicated to prostitution. In 2002, another discovery at the mouth of the Sarno River near Sarno revealed that the port also was populated and that people lived in palafites stilt houses, within a system of channels that suggested a likeness to Venice to some scientists. Topic. AD 62-79 The inhabitants of Pompeii had long been used to minor quaking indeed, the writer Pliny the Younger wrote that earth tremors were not particularly alarming because they are frequent in Campania. But on 5 February 62, a severe earthquake did considerable damage around the bay, and particularly to Pompeii. It is believed that the earthquake would have registered between about 5 and 6 on the Richter magnitude scale. On that day in Pompeii, there were to be two sacrifices, as it was the anniversary of Augustus being named father of the nation, and also a feast day to honor the guardian spirits of the city. Chaos followed the earthquake. Fires, caused by oil lamps that had fallen during the quake, added to the panic. Nearby cities of Herculaneum and Nuceria were also affected, temples, houses, bridges, and roads were destroyed. It is believed that almost all buildings in the city of Pompeii were affected. In the days after the earthquake, anarchy ruled the city, where theft and starvation plagued the survivors. In the time between 62 and the eruption in 79, some rebuilding was done, but some of the damage had still not been repaired at the time of the eruption. Although it is unknown how many, a considerable number of inhabitants moved to other cities within the Roman Empire while others remained and rebuilt. An important field of current research concerns structures that were being restored at the time of the eruption presumably damaged during the earthquake of 62. Some of the older, damaged paintings could have been covered with newer ones, and modern instruments are being used to catch a glimpse of the long-hidden frescoes. The probable reason why these structures were still being repaired around 17 years after the earthquake was the increasing frequency of smaller quakes that led up to the eruption. Topic. Eruption of Vesuvius By the 1st century AD, Pompeii was one of a number of towns near the base of the volcano, Mount Vesuvius. The area had a substantial population, which had grown prosperous from the region's renowned agricultural fertility. Many of Pompeii's neighboring communities, most famously Herculaneum, also suffered damage or destruction during the 79 eruption. 
A multidisciplinary volcanological and bio-anthropological study of the eruption products and victims, merged with numerical simulations and experiments, indicates that at Pompeii and surrounding towns heat was the main cause of death of people, previously believed to have died by ash suffocation. The results of the study, published in 2010, show that exposure to at least 250 degrees Celsius (482 degrees Fahrenheit) hot surges, known as pyroclastic flows, at a distance of 10 kilometers (6 miles) from the vent was sufficient to cause instant death, even if people were sheltered within buildings. The people and buildings of Pompeii were covered in up to 12 different layers of tephra, in total 25 meters (82.0 feet) deep, which rained down for about six hours. Pliny the Younger provided a first-hand account of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius from his position across the Bay of Naples at Misenum but written 25 years after the event. His uncle, Pliny the Elder, with whom he had a close relationship, died while attempting to rescue stranded victims. As admiral of the fleet, Pliny the Elder had ordered the ships of the Imperial Navy stationed at Misenum to cross the bay to assist evacuation attempts. Volcanologists have recognized the importance of Pliny the Younger's account of the eruption by calling similar events, Plinian. It had long been thought that the eruption was an August event based on one version of the letter but another version gives a date of the eruption as late as 23 November. A later date is consistent with a charcoal inscription at the site, discovered in 2018, which includes the date of 17 October and which must have been recently written. Further support for an October November eruption is found in the fact that people buried in the ash appear to have been wearing heavier clothing than the light summer clothes typical of August. The fresh fruit and vegetables in the shops are typical of October, and conversely, the summer fruit typical of August was already being sold in dried, or conserved form. Wine fermenting jars had been sealed, which would have happened around the end of October. Coins found in the purse of a woman buried in the ash include one with a 15th imperatorial acclamation among the emperor's titles. These coins could not have been minted before the second week of September. Topic. Rediscovery After thick layers of ash covered Pompeii and Herculaneum, they were abandoned and eventually their names and locations were forgotten. The first time any part of them was unearthed was in 1599, when the digging of an underground channel to divert the river Sarno ran into ancient walls covered with paintings and inscriptions. The architect Domenico Fontana was called in, he unearthed a few more frescoes, then covered them over again, and nothing more came of the discovery. A wall inscription had mentioned a decurio Pompeii the town councillor of Pompeii", but its reference to the long-forgotten Roman city was missed. Fontana's covering over the paintings has been seen both as a broad-minded act of preservation for later times, and as censorship in view of the frequent sexual content of such paintings, as he would have known that paintings of the hedonistic kind later found in some Pompeian villas were not considered in good taste in the climate of the Counter-Reformation. Herculaneum was properly rediscovered in 1738 by workmen digging for the foundations of a summer palace for the King of Naples, Charles of Bourbon. Pompeii was rediscovered as the result of intentional excavations in 1748 by the Spanish military engineer Roque Joaquin de Alcubierre. These towns have since been excavated to reveal many intact buildings and wall paintings. Charles of Bourbon took great interest in the findings even after becoming King of Spain because the display of antiquities reinforced the political and cultural power of Naples. Carl Weber directed the first real excavations, he was followed in 1764 by military engineer Francisco La Vega. Francisco La Vega was succeeded by his brother, Pietro, in 1804. During the French occupation Pietro worked with Christophe Salicetti, Giuseppe Fiorelli took charge of the excavations in 1863. During early excavations of the site, occasional voids in the ash layer had been found that contained human remains. It was Fiorelli who realized these were spaces left by the decomposed bodies and so devised the technique of injecting plaster into them to recreate the forms of Vesuvius's victims. This technique is still in use today, with a clear resin now used instead of plaster because it is more durable, and does not destroy the bones, allowing further analysis. The discovery of erotic art in Pompeii and Herculaneum left the archaeologists with a dilemma, between the mores of sexuality in ancient Rome, and in Counter-Reformation Europe lay a clash of cultures. An unknown number of discoveries were hidden away again. A wall fresco depicting Priapus, the ancient god of sex and fertility, with his extremely enlarged penis, was covered with plaster. 
An older reproduction was locked away, out of prudishness, and opened only on request, and only rediscovered in 1998 due to rainfall. In 2018, an ancient fresco depicting an erotic scene of Leda and the Swan was discovered at Pompeii. A large number of artifacts from the buried cities are preserved in the Naples National Archaeological Museum. In 1819, when King Francis visited the Pompeii exhibition there with his wife and daughter, he was so embarrassed by the erotic artwork that he decided to have it locked away in a so called secret cabinet, Gabinetto Segreto, a gallery within the museum accessible only to people of mature age and respected morals. Reopened, closed, reopened again and then closed again for nearly 100 years, the Naples' secret museum was briefly made accessible again at the end of the 1960s the time of the sexual revolution and was finally reopened for viewing in 2000. Minors are still allowed entry only in the presence of a guardian or with written permission. Tourism Pompeii has been a popular tourist destination for over 250 years, it was on the Grand Tour. By 2008, it was attracting almost 2.6 million visitors per year, making it one of the most popular tourist sites in Italy. It is part of a larger Vesuvius National Park and was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1997. To combat problems associated with tourism, the governing body for Pompeii, the Soprintendenza Archaeological di Pompeii, have begun issuing new tickets that allow for tourists to also visit cities such as Herculaneum and Stabiae as well as the Villa Papaea, to encourage visitors to see these sites and reduce pressure on Pompeii. Pompeii is also a driving force behind the economy of the nearby town of Pompeii. Many residents are employed in the tourism and hospitality business, serving as taxi or bus drivers, waiters or hotel operators. The ruins can be easily reached on foot from Pompeii Scavi Villa dei Misteri Station by Circumvesuviana Commuter Rail Naples, Sorrento route, directly at the ancient site. There are also car parks nearby. Excavations in the site have generally ceased due to the moratorium imposed by the superintendent of the site, Professor Pietro Giovanni Guzzo. Additionally, the site is generally less accessible to tourists, with less than a third of all buildings open in the 1960s being available for public viewing today. Nevertheless, the sections of the ancient city open to the public are extensive, and tourists can spend several days exploring the whole site. Conservation <inaudible> 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 Objects buried beneath Pompeii were well preserved for almost 2,000 years. The lack of air and moisture let objects remain underground with little to no deterioration. Once excavated, the site provided a wealth of source material and evidence for analysis, giving detail into the lives of the Pompeians. However, once exposed, Pompeii has been subject to both natural and man-made forces, which have rapidly increased deterioration. Weathering, erosion, light exposure, water damage, poor methods of excavation and reconstruction, introduced plants and animals, tourism, vandalism and theft have all damaged the site in some way. Two-thirds of the city has been excavated, but the remnants of the city are rapidly deteriorating. The concern for conservation has continually troubled archaeologists. The ancient city was included in the 1996 World Monuments Watch by the World Monuments Fund, and again in 1998 and in 2000. In 1996 the organization claimed that Pompeii desperately need ed repair and called for the drafting of a general plan of restoration and interpretation. The organization supported conservation at Pompeii with funding from American Express and the Samuel H. Cress Foundation. Today, funding is mostly directed into conservation of the site. However, due to the expanse of Pompeii and the scale of the problems, this is inadequate in halting the slow decay of the materials. An estimated $335 million is needed for all necessary work on Pompeii. A recent study has recommended an improved strategy for interpretation and presentation of the site as a cost effective method of improving its conservation and preservation in the short term. In June 2013, UNESCO declared, if restoration and preservation works fail to deliver substantial progress in the next two years, Pompeii could be placed on the list of world heritage in danger. Topic. House of the Gladiators Collapse The 2,000-year-old Shola Armatorum House of the Gladiators collapsed on 6 November 2010. 
The structure was not open to visitors, but the outside was visible to tourists. There was no immediate determination as to what caused the building to collapse, although reports suggested water infiltration following heavy rains might have been responsible. There has been fierce controversy after the collapse, with accusations of neglect. In popular culture Pompeii was the setting for the British comedy television series Up Pompeii, and the movie of the series. Pompeii also featured in the second episode of the fourth season of revived BBC science fiction series Doctor Who, named The Fires of Pompeii, which featured Cecilius as a character. In 1971, the rock band Pink Floyd filmed a live concert titled Pink Floyd, Live at Pompeii, in which they performed six songs in the ancient Roman amphitheatre in the city. The audience consisted only of the film's production crew and some local children. Susie and TBE Banshees wrote and recorded the punk inflected dance song Cities in Dust, which describes the disaster that befell Pompeii and Herculaneum in AD 79. The song appears on their album Tinderbox, released in 1985, on Polydor Records. The jacket of the single remix of the song features the plaster cast of the chained dog killed in Pompeii. Pompeii is a novel written by Robert Harris published in 2003 featuring the account of the Aquarius race to fix the broken aqueduct in the days leading up to the eruption of Vesuvius, inspired by actual events and people. Pompeii is a song by the British band Bastille, released 24 February 2013. The lyrics refer to the city and the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Pompeii is a 2014 German-Canadian historical disaster film produced and directed by Paul W. S. Anderson. In 2016, 45 years after the Pink Floyd recordings, band guitarist David Gilmour returned to the Pompeii Amphitheatre to perform a live concert for his Rattle That Lock World Tour. This event was considered the first one in the amphitheatre to feature an audience since the AD 79 eruption of Vesuvius. Documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> In Search of Episode No. 82 focuses entirely on Pompeii. It premiered on November 29, 1979. The National Geographic special In the Shadow of Vesuvius 1987 explores the sites of Pompeii and Herculaneum, interviews then leading archaeologists, and examines the events leading up to the eruption of Vesuvius. Ancient Mysteries, Pompeii, Buried Alive 1996, an A&E television documentary narrated by Leonard Nimoy. Pompeii, The Last Day 2003, an hour-long drama produced for the BBC that portrays several characters with historically attested names, but fictional life stories living in Pompeii, Herculaneum and around the Bay of Naples, and their last hours, including a Fuller and his wife, two gladiators, and Pliny the Elder. It also portrays the facts of the eruption. It is heavily influenced by Edward Bulwer-Lytton's book The Last Days of Pompeii see Pompeii in popular culture hashtag books and other printed works, which, while being responsible for the popularization of Pompeii in Western culture, has been dismissed for its lack of historical credibility. To give some historical reality to the characters, the death throes of the characters portrayed are based on actual skeletons and bodies found during excavations in the 18th century, while Pliny the Elder's death is shown as based on the accounts of how he actually died. Although in the story the narrator uses reports that Pliny the Elder died from inhaling the fumes of the final and greatest pyroclastic surge, as many reports have found, he most likely had suffered a heart attack or stroke. Pompeii and the AD 79 eruption 2004, a two-hour Tokyo Broadcasting System documentary. Pompeii Live June 28, 2006, a Channel 5 production featuring a live archaeological dig at Pompeii and Herculaneum Pompeii, The Mystery of the People Frozen in Time 2013, a BBC One drama documentary presented by Dr. Margaret Moonford. The Riddle of Pompeii May 23, 2014, Discovery Channel Topic See also Yamatia House of Julia Felix House of Laureus Tiburtinus House of Menander House of Sallust House of the Tragic Poet House of the Vitima Cellum of Pompeii Mastro Berardino, a project with the Italian winery Mastro Berardino to replant the vineyards of Pompeii Robert Rive, 1850s photographer of Pompeii Suburban Baths Pompeii, Temple of Isis Pompeii, Volcanic Destruction Armero Tragedy, a city in Colombia that 
that suffered a similar fate in 1985 Hoya de Saron, a pre-Columbian farming village in El Salvador known as the Pompeii of the Americas Plymouth, Montserrat, former capital city buried by volcanic ash from the Sofriere Hills volcano in the 1990s Saint Pierre, Martinique, town similarly destroyed by the volcanic eruption of Mount Pili, in 1902 Otherdora Europis, also known as the Pompeii of the Desert. Aclanum cumi aplanti stabiae topic References topic Further reading topic External links Official website Pompeii at Curly Data on new excavations from the International Association for Classical Archaeology AIAC Ancient History Encyclopedia – Pompeii Forum of Pompeii Digital Media Archive Creative Commons Licensed Photos, Laser Scans, Panoramas, Data from a University of Ferrara – SciArc Research Partnership Romano Campanian Wall Painting – English, Italian, Spanish and French introduction mainly focusing on wall paintings from Pompeian houses and villas N. Purcell, R. Talbert, T. Elliott, S. Gillies. Places, 433,032 Pompeii. Pleiades. Retrieved March 8, 2012. Pompeii, the mystery of people frozen in time Annotated Google Map and Satellite View.